I don't know what to say. I, I, I really, I, <laughs> I really don't know what to say. I'm at a loss for words. I, I, I really don't know what to say. You can't write this, bro. Like, you really can't. You cannot write this. The type of misfortunes that this franchise has time after time again, you cannot write this. Especially against that team over in Indianapolis. I know a lot of people feel the way they feel about the Titans because it used to be the Oilers and the history with that. But there's a reason why I can't stand that team in Indianapolis because of stuff like this. like And this happens all the time. The Rosen cop the game. Gary Kubiak uh, um, collapsing at halftime. Um, Andre Johnson... Fump, Andre Johnson fumbling right after J.J. Watt returns a fumble down for a touchdown. You easily about to beat, easily about to beat the Colts. Then the, the stuff that happens in Indianapolis back in 2011 when uh, Dan Olaski comes off the bench and beats you when you cleared the bad team back in 2011. Ryan Fitzpatrick breaking his leg. Um, 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 Aaron Foster touchdown getting called back. Uh, uh, getting called back off of a bogus uh, uh, block, in the, not block in the back, but a legal formation. Uh, opposite, no, it was a block in the back. A legal block in the back on the opposite side of the field. Type. Just, you cannot write the misfortunes that happens against this team. Uh, Tom Savage tearing the ACL on the final drive of the game. Like, you cannot write, especially the stuff that happens at Indianapolis. Like, you cannot write this type of stuff. You really can't. Like, <laughs> like Matt Hasselbeck coming off the hospital bed and be you on Thursday Night Football. Like, we had so many bad misfortunes against this team and for the same thing to happen in a two-week span. Are you kidding me? The exact same thing to happen in a two-week span. You can't write this. What's up, YouTube? Your boy back once again with another sport topic. And today we're going to talk some football. Houston Texans football. Houston Texans fall to Indianapolis Colts 27-20. to And a game that you really... You 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 feel so you you just feel empty about this game to be honest with you because it was the exact same way as last week game Deshaun Watson plays but he plays he plays butt off Deshaun Watson completely plays his ass off like they, like like like, like that, that boy is balling like you you can't slip in tell me we don't have a franchise quarterback that, that that boy is balling let's talk about it. we're gonna break down these numbers and you're gonna be like damn let's talk about this like I say uh, the Houston Texans fall to the Indianapolis Colts twenty seven to twenty Deshaun Watson was thirty three. A 41 for a completion percentage of 80.5. Hear that again. 80. Andre Johnson, 80.5 completion percentage. He threw for 373 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Was sacked five times, by the way, because that, that, that coach pass rush was relentless. For a quarterback rating of 120.8. David Johnson uh, had rushed the ball eight times for uh, 27 yards. Uh, uh, um, Deshaun Watson um, um, uh, rushed the ball for uh, 25 yards. Um, he also had he also had a fumble in the game, so he did have a turnover. Um, Duke, uh, da uh, David Johnson was targeted 11 times, caught 11 catches for 106 yards. Brandon Cooks was targeted seven times for six catches for 59 yards. Uh, uh, Hanson was targeted three times for two catches for 55 yards and a touchdown. Kiki, <sighs> Kiki was targeted seven times, had five catches. For 53 yards, a touchdown, but a crucial, costly fumble that we're going to talk about. Akers was targeted six times for five catches, 50 yards. Kyle Warren, Kyle Warren showed up, was targeted twice for two catches for uh, um, for 32 yards. Farrell Brown was targeted once for one catch for 11 yards. Also, Phillips, uh, 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 Scotty Phillips, off the practice squad. Beat me up, Scotty. Sc uh, uh, um, um, Scotty Phillips. Rushed the ball twice for nine yards, uh, um, and also caught one catch for uh, for seven yards. Um, it also gave, did a nice, decent job in the return game, especially with Duke and uh, uh, Duke being out, and also CJ Prosides being out. I'm glad that Sky Fields able to get able to get some uh, get, get some run. Uh, Philip Rivers uh, uh, had was 22 of 28 for 78.6 percent, 228 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, was only sacked one time for a quarterback rating of 124.4. Jonathan Taylor rushed the ball 16 times for 83 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Knicks, uh, uh, um, um, no, it's Hines, I'm sorry, Hines. Nick, Nick, uh, Hines uh, carried the ball five times for 43 yards. Um, um, Pastel was targeted six times for five catches for 79 yards. T.Y. Hilton was targeted uh, six times for four catches for, four, uh, for, uh, for 71 yards. 
Oh, uh, um, Pastor also had two touchdowns. Uh, Billy Pittman was, uh, my, my, I'm sorry, Michael Pittman was targeted uh, three times for three catch for two catches for 19 yards. And T.Y. had, had a crucial, what, it was a, like 27 yard reception after it was like third and 20 at the end of the game. And I, I was actually more mad at the Texans that they didn't went ahead and let T.Y. Hilton score in that situation because it almost cost them the time. But like I said, at the end of the day, Deshaun Watson completely played his ass off. Like Deshaun Watson showed you that he's a franchise quarterback. Look at those receivers. He's out there with Kiki. He's out there with with, uh, with, with Hanson. He's out there with Scotty Phillips. He's out there with uh, David Johnson. He's out there with, uh, um, with Brandon Cooks. Again, no Will Fuller, no Randall Cobb, no, no, none, none of these top level guys. And he's still going out there, damn it, throwing for three, damn it, throwing for four hundred yards. Also got career high touchdowns, by the way, this year. Um, by his career high was twenty six. He got two touchdowns. Days and his career high is at twenty seven, and he also threw for over four thousand yards over the season. But it is it is unreal that Deshaun Watson can play the way he played against these Colts these last two games because it's clear to me that the Texans are able to beat this Colts team. Because this Colts team with this this dominant defense and the, 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 and, the, and the Colts team is actually a good team. I give them credit. Their roster is a very good roster, and I I, I was thinking that their Achilles heel was going to be um was was going to be uh um Phil, uh, I'm not about to say Philip Dissett, but um um Philip Rivers, but Philip Rivers has not been turnover prone the way he normally is at San Diego. So I give him credit. But this Texan team can beat them if the Texans had competent play. Because you fumble on the goal line in both games. And I and we were talking about this uh in the Discord earlier in the middle of the game that I believe that the, the right decision for the Texans, if they would have scored a touchdown, would win here go for two and end that game. Just end it. No, there's no reason there's no need to go to overtime. You score a touchdown in this game. And for you to get all the way down to the goal line. You throw a pass to Kiki. Kiki's, Kiki's about to walk into the end zone. Like I said about Andre Johnson back in 2014, when he, Andre Johnson catches a pass and he already has the first down. If Andre Johnson falls, the Texans are in field goal range and they went and they beat the Colts. And he's clearly like he like five yards away from the end zone. There's nobody by him. He easily can walk into the end zone. And it looks like that's what he's about to do. And the defender comes up and just and just swipes Andre Johnson and the ball just pops out of Andre Johnson's hands. The Colts get the ball back, end up winning the game. The same situation. Kiki catches the first down. Now, I guess in some defense of Kiki, I think because, you know, we had to, we had to use our last timeout, but we did have the first down. And I guess Kiki, like, I need to go ahead and score because I'm right. But all, all Kiki had to do was fall down on the ground. All Kiki had to do was fall down. We could went, we could spike the ball. We would still had like 20 some seconds left, and the Texans still would have been able to have a chance to go into the end zone. So for that, I can't really 100% fault him for trying to make a play and trying to score a touchdown. So I'm not, I'm not going to crush him for that. But I am going to crush him. You got to hold on to that ball, bro. You got to. You, you, you got to because now, now, now this fump like the fumbling narrative that people was giving to you early on, I felt was unfair because you had the one fumble last year against the Broncos, and then then you just didn't get another chance, another opportunity, and then you end up getting another fumble again against the Ravens. I'm like, all right, like, that, that, like yeah, those are two close fumbles, but you're not really getting the opportunity in between. So yeah, both times we see you play, you getting fumbles, it looks bad. Now it's back to back weeks because you fumbled last week against Chicago, and I kind of, I kind of, you know, I kind of, you know, the game was over, it was a blowout. I wasn't really mad about that. This one is the most costly fumble because both against the Ravens and against the Broncos, even though it catapulted a blowout at the end of the day, you were still getting, you still end up getting blowout. I'm not gonna say that. Oh, if Kiki would have kept on those, if he would kept uh, held on to both of those balls, the Texans won the loss or when they got blown out. I think they still would have lost those games, and more than likely, those scores would still been the same type of score. Last week, you already getting blown out in the middle when you fumble. So yeah, no harm, no foul. This one right here is the most crucial fumble that you've ever had because. This right here <clears throat> was the difference between you potentially tying the game and end up losing the game. <clears throat> and that's what happened. You lost the game because you lost this fumble. That fumble is the most crucial play of this game. Like that that's uh, just like 
two weeks ago when Nick Martin fumbles a snap and Deshaun Watson got to be sitting up here like, bro, you got to be kidding me. There's no way that this could happen in back-to-back -back games against the same team that we get down here to the goal line, potentially game time touchdown on both fronts. On both, actually, the last one will be the game, the game winner because you went down by six. Well, I think the, when the last score was like 26, 20, when the, so you, <clears throat> you lost <laughs> you lost 26 to 20 last time and you lose 27 to 20 this time. Like, and then you lose the exact same way. Like, th th there's no way. You can't write this. Like, like no no director, no screenwriter for a movie will even write this type of stuff to happen the exact same way in a two-week span against the same team. The same, damn to the same scope. Damn to the same stop line by Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson played out of his mind in both games. Over 300 yards in both games. Like, you can't. Against this good-ass defense. Like, man, you cannot sit up here and tell me. Like, this, this is completely unreal. in the play calling. Because, to be honest, at the beginning of the game, the, the play calling was absurd. And, and really, the Texans only had 13 points in the first half. They should have more. Because we get to the red zone. I don't know what Tim Kelly's doing. Tim Kelly's constantly running David Johnson up the middle. Bro, I understand the whole, you got to establish the run. You have to have the threat of the run. All right, fine. Don't run David Johnson up the middle. David Johnson does not need to be getting ran up the middle. I'm sorry. They, do not run him, up the, run him outside. Run him outside of a tussle. Run him outside of a, a um, um, Tyus Howard before Tyus Howard got hurt. Like, run him outside. Don't keep running him up the middle. You can see the look on the shot. You know when it takes about the run. Well, you know when the test about to run up the middle because Deshaun Watson has a look on his face. Like, I can't believe we about to run up the middle with David Johnson. It, go go back and look at the game. Every time they run up the middle, Deshaun Watson has the exact same look on his face. Like, I do not want to be here. I, 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 I'd rather be in my cheese, in my, in my, uh, in my, uh, in my cheesesteak place, man. Making cheesesteaks, man. If I'm, I'd rather be making... A uh, Houston cheesesteaks, and they ain't feeling cheesesteak. I'd rather be making make, make some cheesesteaks, bro. I, I I don't want to be here right now because they they calling some bull. They calling some bull. Like, why are you running up the middle with David Johnson? That makes no sense. Um, you like they mismanaged the clock. Uh, and, and, and oh, that's another thing too. The uh, uh, NFL, please explain to me why. Um, I, and I get, I know sometimes it's because you know the the defensive lineman actually makes contact with the offensive lineman. But we had a free play in the first half when we got into the red zone because uh, we, it was offsides. Now earlier in that drive, the offsides, Deshaun Watson was able to hike the ball, and I think he ended up getting sacked in that play. But during the free play, he wasn't able to take a strike. He ended up getting sacked in that play. But then we get into the red zone, and the exact same thing happens again. And they called the offside penalty, and they blew the play dead. And we didn't get a chance to get a free play. I think if we would have got a chance to get a free play in that situation, I think we would have possibly had a potential to score instead of kicking a field goal. And then uh, uh, Kaimi almost missed the damn field goal. He hit the upright and barely went in. And, and you on the goal line. Like, that, that, like come on, Kyle. You, you got to do better than that. And uh, it, 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 it was just – like I said, the, the defense – once again, the defense played well in the second half. I know last time the defense only allowed – defense didn't allow no points in the second half because of what – the defense only allowed 24 points in last in last time's game, and then the Texans ended up giving them a safety. That's how they got 26. And uh, this some of them numbers, they got, I think they had 20. Yeah, the, the uh, they, they, they they had 20 going into halftime because the halftime score was 20 to 10, and you allowed the last touchdown at the end of the game. After Texas go back and uh, and, and tie and tie all the twenty, so the defense did a decent job once again, especially being shorthanded with no with no Philip Gaines and and also no uh, no uh, no Brandon Dunn, also no Justin Reed this game and stuff like that. So I mean the defense did the defense played well enough at the end of the game to win you the game, and the offense because of Deshaun Watson played well enough to win the game. Like Deshaun Watson is playing well enough to win. Damn to all these games. Now, last week in Chicago, you really won in it. You really won in the game against uh, Kansas City. You won get You won in the game against. Uh, you won. The, you won in the game against uh, um, Green Bay and also uh, what's the other team we lost to early on? Uh, uh, the Ravens. But you had to lead against Pittsburgh going into halftime. Uh, you played well enough to beat. You could have beat Minnesota. You came to the right at the end of the game. Your damn sure should have beat the Titans. 
I mean, it was a three-point game throughout the whole game against against Cleveland. Like Deshaun's played well enough to he deserves better than be, he deserves better. Like we are like the Texan franchise is comp doing him a complete disservice of letting him sit up here with a four and ten record. Like Deshaun Watson at the at the very least right now should be at, uh, at the very least it would be seven and seven. If if not if not eight and five if not eight and six or eight and five yeah, like at, at the very least he should he should yeah he should be be seven and seven or eight and five at the, at the very least at 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 the very least Deshaun Watson has played well enough that we deserve three games like we deserve the Titans game, we deserve both of these Colts game if not at least the last at least not the last one, um at least not the the, the last one two weeks ago. And then, and then another game here, and then like like Deshaun Watson deserves seven to eight wins right now. And for him to sit up here at four, uh, only four, and being four and ten is doing him complete disservice. The dude is balling. He's playing out of his mind. The dude threw forty one attempts. It had a complete percentage of eighty percent, eighty percent after throwing the ball forty one times. He threw the ball forty one times and had a complete percentage of eighty percent. You, you, who again? Like I said earlier, you can't write this. You can't write this. We have to get this general manager hired correct. We have to get this job hired correct. We we have to because I believe you get the general manager job correct, everything else is going to fall in line. You're going to get everything else. You, you you're going like the coaching move, the, like the coaching hire, and then him hiring the staff, and then you doing the draft, and then you doing for ages. For ages going to come, and because and when that happens, when you get on step on the field, Deshaun Watson. When Deshaun, these efforts won't be in vain because right now Deshaun Watson is putting Herculean efforts in vain. He's putting up um, Game Boy, not Game Boy. He's putting up a PlayStation Five Madden stats, <laughs> but he playing. He's putting up Madden stats for nothing, completely for nothing. Deshaun Watson has a career high in touchdowns. He's already thrown for over four thousand yards. He potentially, if he, if he plays the last two games. Like he's only three touchdowns away from a fran from the franchise record. Actually, two from time because the franchise record is twenty nine. He's at twenty seven. He only needs two touchdowns to tie the franchise record. Three to break the franchise record, and he's over. Uh, I think I think he I think he only needs like five hundred yards left to break the franchise record for the most yards in the season. He's only five. He's only like five hundred yards, uh, give or take. From breaking the franchise record in the season, because the franchise record is uh, four thousand seven hundred and seventy. So all he needs is four thousand seven hundred seventy-one to break the franchise record for the most yards and the most and, uh, and three more touchdowns to break for the most touchdowns in franchise history. And he's going to be doing it on at best a six and ten team, and that's if they win the last two games. That's at best a six and ten team, if not a four and twelve team. That is completely and utterly ridiculous. It is. It, it, it's just ridiculous, and, and and think about this: these are not garbage time numbers. Oh, you getting beat by uh yeah yeah you, you get you getting beat by three touchdowns at the end. Are uh, you getting beat like you know you down like twenty eight to nothing at halftime, and then at the end of the game you lose the game forty two to twenty one, and you be able to put some garbage time stats? No, no, like we at the end of the game and fumbling on the goal line. <laughs> there should be go ahead touchdowns. He should have twenty eight touchdowns. Like, 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 Kiki should have the twenty eighth touchdown today, <laughs> like to tie, like to to take the lead to win the game type stuff like that. He should have had the twenty eighth touchdown back against Minnesota when Will Fuller drops the touchdown pass. If the defense holds on to the holds on to the lead against against the Titans, you beat the Titans type stuff. So he's doing it in he's doing it in real game time. They not empty calories. He's doing it in real game time, but. It's all for not. Now, hopefully, uh, we go, we'll see what going forward. I, again, I like to see some more out of uh, Scotty Phillips. I like to see some more out of uh, um, I, I, Kyle Warren. I want to see more of these guys. I'm glad that Kyle Warren finally was able to get some targets, finally get some play. We finally get to see what Kyle Warren is. I mean, we drafted him last year in the third round. We have yet to see him play, so I'm glad to see him play. Same thing with Scotty Phillips. We, we picked him up uh, as an undrafted free agent, especially with all the turmoil that we have in running back situation. Let's see what we have. To be honest, Scotty Phillips should start next week. Like, like beam up Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty. Get Scotty in. Scotty should start. And the reason why, and I say, I'm not saying that Scotty's even better than David Johnson. I'd rather see Sky Phillips get some more run than David Johnson because we know what David Johnson is at this point. We don't know what Sky Phillips is at this point. And another thing too, I'm glad that we seeing uh, um um Henson. 
But where, where's Isaiah at? I mean, we draft Isaiah. Let's, let's throw him in there. Throw him in the mix. Let's see what he can do. Maybe Isaiah can catch the ball at the at the one yard line and score a touchdown. Maybe he won't fumble. He maybe he won't fumble at, at, at the um, at the goal line again. Y'all know I'm a Texas Tech guy. I come for Kiki. I want Kiki to succeed. I want Kiki to play well. I believe that Kiki's been done wrong early on, but I'm gonna hold you accountable. This was a horrible move, and I'm putting this. I'm putting this. I'm. I'm I, I hate to do it, bro, but I gotta put this on your feet, bro. I got put this. I got put this at your doorstep. You clearly can walk in the end zone and score the touchdown, or at the very least, just fall on the ground. Fall on the ground. Hold on to the ball. Secure the ball. Fall on the ground, and and, and we and live and live to play another day. We can win. We can spike the ball real quick, and we still would have had two to three plays to try to score a touchdown. But again, the Texans have misfortunes against these damn Indianapolis Colts, and I can't stand that franchise. I, yeah, y'all just don't know. I, all the things I know, people hate the Patriots and all. I cannot stand the Indianapolis Colts, and this is one of the reasons why. Like, subscribe if you haven't. Comment below if you haven't. Click that bell, get more videos. Uh, holla.